Okay, the time has come to submit assignment six, our graphic symbol for Earth Day, our embattled Earth. The first thing we need to be able to submit is our sketch, right? So, oh, I already have it here. So my sketch is this. And it started with just a blue line sketch. Blue line is a, a type of colored pencil that doesn't show up on old photocopiers. So it's just an old school way of sketching and then inking on top. Um, but then I did some digital sketching and I ended up compositing these elements to get me a start. So all of this could be considered my sketch, right? What I would like to see from each of you is your initial sketch for the graphic symbol you ended up with, whether you did it by hand, whether you did it in the computer, or whether you did it by compositing. So I'm going to save that to the desktop so that that's ready to put up into PhotoBucket. The next thing I need, it's the most important thing, is the black shape symbol, the black shape logo or symbol. And you wanna open that up in Illustrator, right? So I'm going to open with Illustrator. And this might be an AI file still. I have it as an AI file there. But here, this is the black shape version, right? So that there's no white involved. So if I take the whole thing that I'm using and I move it off of the white artboard in Illustrator and onto the gray, there shouldn't be any white in there at all. It shows me that it's it's just kind of black cutout shapes. It can be helpful to think of it as a tattoo, you know, where the skin would come behind it, or as a vinyl sticker that you might put on your car, right? This is what you would need to get a really clean cutout. It's also what a t-shirt company would need in order to print it, and they might fill it with red ink or something, but the black shape is the important thing. Okay, in order to bring that into a more versatile way of using it, because AI files can only be opened in Adobe Illustrator. We need a, a vector file that can be opened in Photoshop so that we can make it into a raster file, a JPEG, so, something that can go online, right? So what we do is we say file save as, and we make sure we save it as an EPS format. Think of that as a, a portable vector format. And I'm gonna save that right to the desktop. Make sure only the layers um, that you want are turned on. And make sure that the others are actually unlocked as well. So file save as, doesn't matter if it's on the artboard or not when you save it, as long as it's the only thing turned on. As an EPS, and I'm going to save it to the desktop. So this is my black version of the logo. Okay, then I can leave Illustrator. And now I am going to open up Photoshop. and create a new file. Because when you bring in a vector into Photoshop, if you try to open the vector in Photoshop, it will make you rasterize it. It will say, well, what, what size and how many pixels do you want? And we don't want to rasterize it. We want to keep it a vector. So instead, we create the paper size we want, and we are going to make it print ready. So we're going to create a new image. And because my logo is taller than it is wide, I'm going to make it taller than it is wide. So it's going to be 10 inches wide. Oh, that's not right. Let's swap that. It's going to be 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall by 350 pixels per inch. That's our standard lab resolution. That's 50 pixels per inch higher than professional resolution. I want a background that's white. I want a standard uh, print gamma profile. All the defaults, it's just 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. Now I go to my desktop, and this is one of those reasons it's really important to save to your desktop. The only way to bring a smart object into Photoshop is to drag and drop it, right? So instead of trying to open this with Photoshop, which would force me to rasterize it right there, and that's, that's no good, I drag and drop it in, just like we did with our cartoon jumble. It will automatically center it. And then, because I made this paper size, you know, this background, this canvas, 8 by 10, this is the opening of the mat that we're going to print and, and present this logo in. So 
what do I want to show to the, to the class? I can hold down shift and option and shrink or grow this, knowing that this black space out here represents the borders of the mat, because we're going to use black mats. And so I don't want it to be touching the sides, right? That's a tangency. I want it to come in a little bit. And a little secret about mats is that it's actually not an eight by 10 window. It's actually a seven and a half by nine and a half inch window because they always overcut them a little bit or you can undercut them depending on how you see it, right? So that's to make sure that the eight by 10 is actually overlapping the mat. So I don't want to get too close to the edge for all those reasons. But if I think it looks pretty good this way, then I hit return and it's a vector. It's gonna, going to rasterize um, to whatever scale I put it, right? And if I needed to grow it later, it would, it would beautifully scale up because it's still a smart object. Now the beauty of that is I can also double click on the smart object layer and add layer styles to it while keeping it a vector. So I want you to have a black and white version and a color version. So the black and white version can have things added to it like a drop shadow, right? So I have this drop shadow with all these options. I have it a little bit noisy, so it looks kind of like a 1960s kind of embossed black logo with a paper texture. I can set different angles for it. Um, I can play with its size, right? I can make it sharper or softer. I can spread it. So I'll make it really subtle. So that little drop shadow helps. I might also try some other things. If you want, you can give it an inner glow, right? And you can play with those effects. This is more grayscale than just black shape, but it all comes from that just single black shape logo. So I can also make that kind of noisy and I can soften that up. And certain things will work better depending on what your logo is, right? So that just gives a slight texture to it, like the ink is, is slightly textured. Right? And it looks kind of grainy and it looks kind of retro and I could play with the opacity overall of the drop shadow. Just deaden it a little bit more and maybe spread its distance a little bit. Sharpen its angle. And if I think this is ready, Then I simply say, file save as, and this is going to be my name, assignment six, black shape, right? And mine's a logo. Now that's my PSD and I save it as a PSD. Now I need to have the, the version of it that I put up to photo bucket. So then I say file save as an online format which compresses it, and that is JPEG. So I do that. And I can, because it's just black and white and a smart layer with some layer styles on, it takes up almost no memory. So I'm well below the five megabytes we want to put up to photo bucket. So I've got those now. So, so far I've got my sketch and I've got my, my JPEG ready to submit to photo bucket of my black logo. Now I can think about adding color to it. Now the easiest way is to simply make a duplicate of your smart layer and then go back to effects and start adding some color effects. So for instance, if I thought, oh, well, this would be kind of a nice pale blue. And that's my color version. That works, that's a color version. It still uses the same vector shape. Um, I could decide I don't want a drop shadow, or I could decide I want the drop shadow to be a complementary color, like an orange. Let's try that, make its opacity a little bit stronger. That gives it a little something. I could change the inner glow. This is why I made a duplicate of it, didn't just replace what I had done before. And I can change that inner glow to a gradation. It's just so many things you can kind of play with and see what works for your logo. But these are all variations on your black logo shape. I'm enjoying the, the noise factor with these. I don't usually play with 
with texturing and noise, but it's actually quite effective. When you're dealing with vectors, you don't need them to actually print like perfectly flat. It actually gives them a little bit more personality to give them a little bit of texture. And you'll see that with a lot of logo treatments. Okay, and then I can actually layer it up with a gradient overlay over the whole thing. And let's see, let's just do it normal. And let's do it at a high opacity and then let's dim the overall color overlay. I think I can actually change the order of these too. Well, maybe not, but I can add more if I needed to here. So to get the different kind of functions you want, I can change the angle of the gradient so that we can see it clearly. Let me take out more of the solid color. And of course, I can play with the gradation itself. Like I can extend the blues. And last a little longer. So it's showing you how versatile a vector um, black shaped design can be. It can be kind of filled with any ink and worked out in these really interesting ways. So I'm going for kind of 70s colors with this. I can play with different organizations. So that works pretty well. I could even reverse it. So I want the blue and the planet instead. And yeah, I think I like that. So I have a colored version. I have a black version. If I layer them on top of each other, I'll see how those drop shadows kind of co-mingle. And maybe that's what I want to print, right? That's coloring in Photoshop. And then I would simply say file, save as, and then save a different version as my color shape logo as a PSD, even though it's the same vector. And then if I wanted to put that up to photo bucket, I say file, save as a JPEG. Again, it's not going to take a whole lot of memory, though more than just black. Okay, now what if I want to make it print ready? So I have to choose, do I want my color version or my black version to be the one I print for my critique? And what I then want to do is let's just say I want my, my black version to print. Then what I do is I say, I say layer, flatten the image. Discard all the hidden layers, merge it all into one, right? It's the only time we flatten the image the whole semester. And then we immediately save it as something else. We save it as our print ready version. So what I do is I put a capital PR in front of it. And instead of it being a PSD format, a Photoshop document, we want to save it as a TIFF format. It's the first time we've used that, T-I-F-F. -F. It gives a little postscript of TIF. Let the computer write that in. You don't write that in. And what's great about a TIFF format is it is a lossless compression format. So it's what's called an archive format. It also can be opened by multiple types of thought, uh, applications, not just Photoshop. So when I say save, I want to compress the image, but I want to do it with LZW, which is a lossless compression. It means it takes up less space, but doesn't hurt the quality at all. It just takes a little bit longer to save, a little bit longer to open, and it's almost imperceptible. So once I do that, I have to my desktop now a print ready version. I'm going to mark that with a green. And in order to print that, I'm going to go to Dropbox, our class Dropbox. And you can find the login and stuff under links in the class. And I'm going to go to Files. And I need to sign out because I'm in my personal account and we want to get in the class account. So that is NLC Arts Lab at gmail.com and then because we're on the video I don't want to say what the password is but you know what it is and it's in our links page and there is a folder there ah what did I do 